where would we be as a culture without pizza? I mean, we wouldn't have the great American debate, New York or Chicago style. We wouldn't be able to buy cheap food unless it was from McDonald's dollar menu, and we sure as hell wouldn't have any Domino's. Suddenly, I felt Sean Faust cry out in abject agony. Feel better, buddy. Domino's Pizza. Where would we be without them? <laughs> well, we wouldn't have the Oreo pizza. The Ugh. And we wouldn't have the Noid. And without the Noid, we would not be able to play Capcom's strangest licensed game yet, Yo Noid, until we win. Believe me, this game makes no sense. Well, we can make sense of it now, but when we were kids, this game was just downright confusing. Picture this, we have a claymation mascot who dresses up in a red Easter Bunny suit, a lot like Ralphie's suit in A Christmas Story, running around what is supposed to be New York City, killing enemies with a yo-yo while trying to win pizza-eating contests and casting magic spells with scrolls he picks up on his adventure. That's right, a Domino's Pizza mascot uses magic ninja scrolls to defeat defeat his enemies. I think something got lost in the localization. Originally the game was called Common 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 Ninja Hanamaru. The Masked Ninja Hanamaru. Whatever. While the story is completely different, the Japanese version is about a ninja and the American version is about well, the Noid. The game plays almost identically. In fact, now production, the guys who actually made the localization, hardly changed anything between the two versions. Other than some palette swaps and changing the scenery to look like it's in a city, the games are virtually identical. Except for the boss battles. While the mechanics were the same, in the Japanese version you'd face off against some real enemies in a duel to the death. Meanwhile, in the American version, we got a pizza eating contest. I don't know about you, but I would have preferred to play the ninja game. I mean, pizza eating contests? Really? Listen, this is just a little bit of free advice for those Japanese companies that try to Americanize their localizations. Don't do it, or if you're going to do it, don't base it off a pop culture icon that's not going to be around in another year. I mean, the Noi? Really? You couldn't have picked someone else like, I don't know, Jimi Hendrix? I mean, he's still popular and he's been dead for 30 years. Lloyd. <sighs> Alright, so this game is difficult. You've got a limited number of lives and three continues. You don't get a life bar, so every time you get hit, you die. You start off with three lives and three continues, so you get a total of nine lives. I don't know why they give you continues either, because there are no checkpoints in the levels which means every time you die, no matter how close to the end of the stage you are, you have to go through the entire level again. And oh, there's no exceptions to this rule. If you lose a boss battle, you've got to go back to the beginning of the level. And considering the almost random nature of the boss battles, this makes the game exceptionally difficult to deal with. And the worst part about this game, there are 14 levels you have to go through. Not only is this game a ball busting session, it's an extended ball busting session. Even Battletoads wasn't that cruel. So with the odds stacked against you, how do you get through this game? First, the platforming in this game isn't that difficult. It does try to get cute in a lot of the stages, but for the most part, all you really have to worry about is not falling down pits or jumping directly into spawning enemies. Almost every enemy dies with one hit, and if they don't, it's usually best to just avoid them. You can jump at different heights with the usual Nintendo method of just holding down A a little longer until you reach the peak of your jump. Just like Mystery Quest in my on Secret Castle, Yo Noid suffers from the Japanese craze of finding hidden objects in the game. Each level is sprinkled with various hidden objects that you're going to need in order to get through the boss battles, so you need to randomly swing your yo-yo around in the level in order to find them. This game likes to throw a lot of cute crap at you from the very beginning. Things like mechanical tricks to get you to die, so you're gonna have to react quickly to changing events in order to stay alive. Items disappear, but enemies don't. If an item goes too far past the left edge of the screen, it's gone forever, even if you didn't activate the secret area. But enemies, on the other hand, don't. 
if it's an enemy that can turn around and walk back towards you, it will. You have two weapons in this game, your yo-yo and your magical ninja scrolls. The yo-yo has a very short range and is only good as a basic weapon. Thankfully though, it's pretty much the only weapon you need. If you find that you're in a jam, you can always use one of your ninja scrolls in order to clear the screen of enemies. Practice makes perfect. This game is pretty damn hard and you're going to die. A lot. Your best bet is to play the hell out of each level because once you master a level, you can basically walk through it without breaking a sweat. Try to collect as many hidden objects as possible because it makes the pizza eating contest at the end of each odd numbered level that much easier. The 2 and 3 symbols multiply your pizza count by 2 or 3, while the exclamation point cards let you throw pepper at your opponent or put red peppers on their pizza, causing them to spit it out. Winning the pizza eating contest is more about how many special cards you've collected in the previous levels than actual strategy. The easiest strategy is this. When the opponent uses a high card, like a 5 or a 6, use the pepper or red pepper cards. If your opponent uses a mid-level card, use a low count card, such as 1 or 2, to limit the damage. When your opponent uses a low card, like the 1, use a double or triple card along with your highest value card, giving you the most amount of pizzas. If you stick with this strategy, you'll be able to take advantage of the random nature of the pizza eating contest and move on to the next level. Speaking of levels, I guess it's about time we discuss them, so... Level 1, the docks. I can only assume it's the docks. This level is pretty basic, with only a small number of enemies to worry about. Your biggest threat here, actually, is the level itself. It's sinking. That's a bit of a problem, especially since if you barely touch the water, you're gonna die. Really, the only trick here is to stay on the highest platform when the level sinks and jump between each high point. It's not that hard if you've got any time playing Super Mario Bros., but it can be a pain. At the end of the first level, you'll face off against your first evil Noid, and he's really tame. Just use your high cards when he plays a low one, and use your low cards and your power-ups when he plays a high card, and you should win pretty easily. Level 2, Ice Level. Almost every level in this game is a gimmick, and level 2 is no exception. This time, you're on an ice level, slip-sliding across the floor. At first, this is just your standard ice level, but later on, the game introduces crumbling ice platforms and moving ice blocks. The crumbling platforms are easy to deal with. Just keep moving, either by jumping or walking, and they'll never break. The moving ice blocks, on the other hand, are a real pain. The best method for landing on these suckers is to land on the leftmost edge, giving yourself enough space to slide to the right. If you want to play it safe, then you'll need to land on them as the blocks are moving away from you. Level 3, the Hyperboard. Yeah, level 3 is another gimmick level. This time, you've got to ride a Hyperboard, also known as a Skateboard to the rest of us, through the level. Almost being the key word here. You can jump on enemies in this stage, but the mechanic behind it is... Well, it's wonky. You can't just jump on them with your skateboard. You have to hit them while in a downward arc with your rear wheel. It doesn't work if you're jumping up, but only on the way down. And at the end of stage 3, you'll face off against another Noid. And your strategy here shouldn't be any different than in the previous battle. Level 4, the city rooftops. What's the gimmick in this level? You've got to use your powerful pogo stick to jump your way through the level. Of course, an automatic pogo stick is a bit of a problem when you're on the rooftops of New York City. The trick in this level is to just take your time. Sure, you're up against the clock, but if you're methodical about your jumps, you'll do fine. Level 5, The Sewers. I'm sure Spoony would be thrilled to find out this level exists. So in the sewers, you'll be faced with four really annoying obstacles. Water drops, bursts of fire, floating crates, and these annoying fuckers. These fish are the bane of my existence. I really hate these fish. This level itself isn't anything special. It's your standard platforming action. Don't get hit, don't fall into the sewer water, and get to the end of the stage. There are some sticking points, though. First, the damn fish. They jump up at random, and if the Noid even smells them, he's dead. Sometimes they'll only jump up part of the way, forcing you to jump away, miss a platform, and die. 
The next big problem you'll face are the moving crates. These things are easy to use, but the problem comes from all the flying fish in the level. Really though, the only thing you need to worry about when you're on these crates is jumping off of them in time, because nothing will touch you while you're on them. At the end of level 5, you'll face yet another Noid. No big deal, just keep with the same basic strategy. Level 6, The Harbor. This level is dotted with little boats in the water, and guess what? You have to jump on and off the moving boats that carry you across the water. This increases the platforming difficulty slightly, but it's still relatively tame. What's difficult about this level? The cannonballs. These things just do not quit. If you're hit by the cannonball itself, or if you're hit by the resulting smoke cloud, you die. Avoid them at all costs. There's a really odd portion of this level, and this is when the game starts to take a turn for the weird. A yellow frog marches towards you, which you cannot kill. However, you can easily jump over it. I don't quite get that. Level 7, The Circus, and this is where the game descends into lunacy. This stage is one of those auto-scrolling levels. Thankfully, there aren't any spots where you can get crushed to death, but it does mean you won't have the luxury of timing your jumps, and yes, you'll need to carefully time your jumps if you're going to survive. There's something strange in this level, and I don't quite understand it myself. There's a human skull lying around on the floor. If you touch it, it makes you move slower and jump lower, which will eventually cause you to die. I have no idea what it's doing in this game, or why there's a human skull laying on the floor of a circus. At several points in this level, you'll need to jump across rather large gaps, but don't worry. You can jump onto the horse's backs. The only problem is that once you land, they'll fall off their poles, so you have to be quick to get across. Once again, at the end of the level, there's another pizza eating contest, but it's no big worry. Level 8, Flying. This level is evil. This one introduces you to a flying rig, which I've never seen the Noid use, and if you don't immediately start tapping A, you'll fall right off the edge of the screen and die. So yeah, keep hitting the A button to stay in flight. As per the Nintendo hard rules, you'll need to carefully navigate your way around several obstacles and time your rise and descent to get around them. This level can be a challenge since you can't use your yo-yo. You can use your magic, though. Just stick with it, and eventually you'll memorize everything and get to the end of the stage. Level 9, The Abandoned Warehouse. This level is annoying. There are mice with balloons through the entire level that drop skulls, the same skulls from level 7, that'll slow you down, which eventually cause you to die. Why there are flying mice dropping human skulls on you, I do not know. There are also these little items on the floor that you might think you can step on, but no! As soon as you get near them, you find out they're actually killer cans. This level is going to take some time to get through, mostly because there are a few sections where it would be easier to just turn the game off rather than try to figure out how in the heck you're supposed to get past it. Ah oh, well, live and learn, I guess. Level 10, The Slums. This level is the only one that has enemies that throw beer bottles at you. Why does it kill you? I have no idea. Beer and pizza go hand in hand like Bonnie and Clyde, or me and strawberries. Ah oh, well. Aside from the dicks throwing beer bottles, some of them throw trash cans. Be careful here, because they'll bounce once and then roll on the ground. I can't tell you how many times I jumped directly into a bouncing trash can and then died. It's quite annoying. There's another annoying enemy here, and he throws bricks. You can kill him by timing your jumping right, or you can just go all mystical on his ass and unleash a magic spell. It's your choice, but the yo-yo method looks better on camera. Level 11, a factory. I personally hate this level. Moving past some portions of the stage will cause the level to flash red and start dropping boxes from the sky randomly. Yeah, it's one of those levels where the entire game has been memorization up to this point, and now you're expected to simply react to whatever the game throws at you. How awesome. There are also boxes that fall diagonally. How that's possible, I don't even know. And they cause you some nightmares. <laughs> When possible, moving to the right is your best option. Otherwise, you'll have to carefully time your jumps to avoid them. And yeah, at the end of this level, there's another Noid pizza-eating contest. 
Level 12, the power plants, I guess? This level's gimmick is moving conveyor belts. You know, the type that move you forward automatically. It makes jumping a bit tricky, but it's not impossible. What makes this level devilish, though, is the placement of some of the enemies. Level 13, Climbing the High Rise. In this level, you get to climb a high-rise tower up, up, and up. It's reminiscent of a certain Battletoads level, but not as bad. There's really only one impossibly difficult part here where you need to avoid a bunch of bouncing flower pots and this gear mechanism thing. It's strange, but if you time it right and keep attacking with your yo-yo, you should be able to get by. Level 14, to the air! We finally get to the last stage of the game, and it's another flying stage, and it's not that bad. Just remember to grab all of the power-ups and scrolls in this stage, because you're going to need them for the boss battle. There are a couple of sections that can be tricky, but if you just slow down and take your time, getting past them shouldn't be too much of a problem. After level 14, you'll face off against the final Noid, and he can be tough if you don't have all the power-ups from the previous level. The guy doesn't have any one pizza cards, and in fact he has very few two pizza cards as well, but he does have an overwhelming amount of five and six pizza cards. You're gonna have to get a little lucky to get through this battle, but if you've got the two pepper cards and all the two and three cards, you should be able to pull out a win. Oh, it's over, thank you, God. Man, that was a long game. Oh. You know, it's not that difficult of a game once you get down to it. The platforming is very simplistic, and it's nothing you haven't seen before, but what it lacks in originality, it makes up for in sheer annoyance. God. At least it's not babies, kids.